Have you ever found yourself asking God, like, if this is what you called me to do, why aren't you funding it? Why aren't you bringing in the support? You know that the people exist. You know that there's money out there. You know that God can do anything. So why, if I've stepped out into my calling, I've stepped out into faith, why am I struggling so much? Like, why is, why is it this hard? And what was this all for? Like, why did I step out? And why did I follow this great calling of mine if I was going to struggle this much? And this is my conversation that I had like every single day when I was running my nonprofit. I'd say like, God, I'm ready. Just, just make it happen. And I'd show up every day and it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I just stepped out into my calling. I stepped out in faith and everything came along and it's just, it was miraculous. No, like it was a challenge. It was a struggle. And I was asking God, like, I actually felt silly. I felt stupid. Like, why am I here? Why did I tell everybody that this was going to be the new path and it was going to be this great thing? And it felt very much like sometimes a dud, like, okay, just go back and get a real job, Rebecca, because that wasn't all what it was cracked up to be or what, all that you sold it as, right? So I would have these like inspirational sessions with myself and with God where I would be like, remember, you are just one phone call away from a million dollars. You're just one, you know, moment away where God's going to give you all the funding and you're going to see it was all worth it. And your testimony is going to be just stick with it. And I would get really excited and really high, like guys, all of these problems, everything we had, all it would take is somebody to just write a hundred thousand dollar check. And do you know how much money there is in the world? And do you know how many people are out there that can just write that check? We just have to, we're, we're one phone call away. We're one sponsor away. We're one event away from having all of this be funded and fully funded was really where I wanted to be because then I could focus and not sweat so much. And I would get really excited about that. Like, okay, you know what? Rebecca, if you woke up tomorrow and you had all the money that you needed in your program or for your programming, what would you do? And it would be like, oh my gosh, like I would feel like I was in my sweet spot. I would feel like I had stepped into my calling and I was really living for my purpose because it would all be funded and I wouldn't be sweating so much. So I'd be like, okay, well then that's where we're going to live. And I would be on this high of like, it's possible. It's going to happen. We're motoring forward. I'm just waiting for the check. It's coming in the mail. And then I would be on these lows of trying to draft an email to the landlord about how we were going to be short for the next month's rent. And what do I say? And it's really went against who I was and the integrity that I have as a, as a person to not pay my bills. So I would draft that email a week before I had to actually send it and I would rewrite it and I would reread it and I would pray on it and I would sweat. And so I think it's really important that we address this faith roller coaster rather than just like, hey, keep the faith and, you know, like you're doing this for a reason and motor along. Like, I think we need to validate ourselves that this is hard, that this is a struggle, that it's not just you step out in faith and everything is given to you and that sticking with a calling takes so much work and effort and, and faith isn't easy. Okay. Like faith feels it's when I say it out loud, it feels like I just have faith. So you have peace of mind. Having faith is something that you have to work at. Having faith is like, it's something you have to work at to not stay in that doubt. And so I want to address this roller coaster of like the highs and lows of being in faith, the highs and lows of following those callings, following God, walking in faith. And I want to switch our perspective a little bit from struggle, fear, limitation, insecurity, and bring us to possibility, optimism, clarity, and peace. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to episode 43 of For Purpose Live, where I help you get clear, get focused, and be impactful by showing you how to step fully into the calling that you have been given without taking on that common narrative that nonprofits have to struggle. That's right. Together, we can get you in your sweet spot using your strengths and interests to build a movement for your cause and your mission simply by living for purpose, on purpose. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about how do we keep the faith? How do we keep the faith when we've stepped out in our calling and we, we went all in? 
we went all in, right? And uh, it's just not that easy. If you're sitting here and you're you're a nonprofit founder or you have stepped out in faith and now you're wondering like, what was this all for? Or this doesn't feel like a purposeful life or I don't feel like I'm being rewarded for stepping out in faith or I feel like a martyr to my cause then please go on over and grab my free web class, which is how to run a thriving nonprofit without killing yourself. You can get that at fourpurposelive.com slash secrets, fourpurposelive.com slash secrets and watch it right now. Okay, so what I wanna talk about in keeping the faith is first of all, just know that the idea, the thing, the calling that you've stepped out into, that comes from God, right? It comes like he puts that desire in us and hopefully we really sit on it before we make a decision and we pray on it and we check our knowing and we decide like, is this really for us? And maybe people come around us to support us and it just feels like this is so right and we step out and that idea comes from God, but the outcomes come from us or what we think are the outcomes, the outcomes that we're attached to. Of course, the ultimate outcome comes from God too. But right now, like the reason why you feel like you're struggling, the reason why you feel like you're lacking is because you're not where you want to be. You're not where you expected it to be, right? So God gave you the idea, but he didn't say it's going to be fully funded in the first year. He didn't say you were going to make $70,000 a year being the executive director. He didn't say that you were going to have 40 kids signed up in the first year. Okay, so those are all things that you know, I do strategic planning with nonprofits and we do, we set goals. We hope to get X number of outcomes because we do need to be able to measure our impact. We do need to be able to say to funders and donors and stakeholders, like this is what our target is, okay? But you start losing faith when you get so attached to your outcomes that you lose listening to God and trusting the process. So, if I expected that I was going to get a salary or have a salary within the first year and I, and I wasn't, and I was trying to survive really, you know, working hard to survive. I was personally eating out of a food bank, but I would go back and forth between I deserve a salary and I need a salary. And also God is providing. I ate, I was pretty happy. I had housing. Like there were things that were provided for me while I didn't have that salary. And as much as it was a pain, uh, and like, I definitely feel like I deserve a salary and I think all executive, executive directors should have a salary. I am glad it's part of my testimony. Like part of my testimony is that I struggled so much and like, it's just not easy to get those initial dollars in the door and to fund the operations it takes to, to run this program. But I want to free you guys up from the attachment to the outcomes. So when I first got started in my nonprofit, Stable Moments, I could only see Stable Moments at this one location and I wanted to build out the property. I wanted to get more and more kids each year, right? The first year we served 10, then we served 15, then we served 20, then we served 25. And then I was I was really thinking like, how do we serve 40? How do we serve 50? Because to me, that's what scale was. To me, that's what progress was. And That's what I thought being a good steward of this calling was. I thought, you know, God gave me this calling. I'm stepping out. And of course, the more kids we serve, that would be doing his mission, right? So I kept trying to take on more kids. In fact, I took on more kids thinking that that's what I was supposed to do. And what I neglected was our strategic planning, our funding, our sustainability. So now I'm just killing myself to serve more and more kids to prove something prove that this was meant to be. And I'm getting really top heavy because I haven't focused on my foundation and all the things that would have really helped me be sustainable. That's why I tell so many people now, cut your programming, cut it down to five kids, like just do enough to show that you're doing something and to understand, you know, what your model is and to work on your service that you're offering uh, and make it better and to take pictures for Facebook and all the things we need to do with our services. But in the beginning, focus so much on funding and getting your strategic plans, your systems, your processes. How are we going to make this run like a well-oiled machine before you can go out and serve more, 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 okay? But I was so attached to the outcome of more kids at that one location that it just made me struggle and struggle, kill myself more, kill myself more. And I was so attached to that outcome that I was like, that's that's when I lost faith. 
I wasn't able to serve more kids. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have my systems and processes in place and I didn't work on my foundation. I didn't, so I didn't have a salary, didn't have staff to support the program. And I sat there like, why aren't you talking to God? Why aren't you funding this? Why wouldn't you want me to serve more and more and more kids? When I talk about what God says, I'm just saying like, this is what I felt or what I heard, you know, like my, I believe everybody's relationship with God is very individualized. So I want you to seek out your own relationship. But I felt like now I realize like what he was telling me was, you know, I don't think you should take on more and more and more kids. I don't think that's sustainable. And that's not what I meant for you was to kill yourself to serve kids. I want everybody to feel fulfilled, rewarded. And I want you to be able to show up for those kids at 100%. And you can't do that without getting all this other stuff in line. So I would be freaking out about how are we going to pay the rent? How are all the things that, okay, I have faith and we could get that call tomorrow that says we get a million dollars and everything's funded, but let's be real. In the morning, the rent's due. A kid's going to show up. Like the vet needs to come out to deal with one of the horses, like whatever it is. And I am going to have to pay. Like, I get that faith is nice, but there's a very tangible issue in front of me. So I get that like you can have, like the fear can be legitimate and that might be time is when you can let go of your outcomes, your attachment to your outcomes. So what I do is I go down that path. Okay, so what happens when you can't pay the rent? What happens when you can't feed the horses? Well, if we can't pay the rent and we can't pay the rent long enough, we're going to have to shut this program down. And if we have to shut this program down, then I won't be able to serve this. This will all have been for nothing. And I'll be embarrassed. And I will wonder how could somebody that wanted to do so good and had such good intentions and meant to fully step in, out in faith, how? How could it be that that was silly and and uh, possibly do more trauma because I have to shut the program down for the kids and all of this stuff. So it's like, okay, those are big fears. Those are legitimate. But what if you shut it all that down? What next? Like, have you gained experience? Might you start something else differently? Might you now be able to empathize with other people that have started your program? Fast forward with my program, I had to shut it down. It wasn't because we couldn't pay rent, but there were enough challenges that God pre presented. Specifically, the landlord um, was kicking us off the property and uh, my husband had gotten a job offer in another state and I couldn't believe that like, what was that all for? And if you know my story, I ended up publishing my program model and licensing it and now we serve kids across the United States. And so we have stable moments locations everywhere. So had I killed myself to keep this one location open and had God given me the million dollars that I said, I would have built up that one location. I would have maybe been able to max out at serving 40 kids or 50 kids at that one location. That's all I would have been. And, and that's fine, but God's plans were bigger. So he never made me very comfortable. I stepped out in faith and he was like, okay, cool. I get like, he loved that I was into the idea enough to jump out, but had he made me comfortable, had he given me a full salary, had he made my relationship with the landlord good, had he done all of those things, I would still be there. So every time that I have had like horrible challenges where I feel like the world is ending, the program's shutting down, I can't sustain this anymore. I'm going to like have to burn it to the ground. Basically it was for a rebirth of something. So he had to take me completely out of that for me to go, okay, there is no program. It's done. You've moved off the property. You have mindfully transitioned all the kids out into other services. You're in a new state. You don't have a job. You don't have anything to do. Okay, so what could you do? All right. And that's when I had the time, the freedom to think about possibility because there was nowhere else to go. And that's when I wrote my book and I developed my model and there's a law online certification course. And now we are able to serve kids across the U.S. So all of that needed to happen. But me being attached to the outcome of serving X number of kids, making X number of dollars at this one location is what caused me all my struggles. And I kept thinking faith meant believing the $1 million call was going to come in. 
Maybe Faith was having like, this is all for a reason. I don't know what it's for. Maybe it's for my testimony later. Maybe it's for learning how to develop my foundational stuff for systems and processes. Maybe it's so that I can become an employee of another nonprofit and have really good insight of what it takes to be an executive director. Maybe it's so that I can be a nonprofit consultant one day. Like maybe it's for, it's just for a reason. You don't need to know the reason. Just know that every single thing you're going through is for a reason. He gave you the idea. The idea was the thing you stepped out in faith on. He did not promise a specific outcome. You made those up in your mind. You made up the fact that you need to serve X number of kids. You made up the fact that you need to get a certain amount of, number of dollars. You made up the fact that you needed an income. Okay. So those things may come, but if they don't, what you have defined as a failure in your head might just be the exact next step in your faith, calling, purpose journey. Okay. So my failure of shutting down my program was what I thought was a failure, but I have a blog post, an old one that was about failure doesn't exist because it's like, it was just the next step to shut it down. Like had I written out a business plan, I couldn't have written a business plan better. Like if I had said, I am going to develop this uh, program model that people are going to license and we're going to serve foster adopted kids across the United States. What I'm going to do is start by uh, being a nonprofit because uh, I'd like to run the program and I want to know what it's like for nonprofits that are going to start my program. I'd like to be empathetic to them and understand what their challenges are. Then I'm going to shut down the program after we have successfully collected data and we've refined the model. Then I'm going to publish it. Like somebody would be like, wow, that sounds like a really great plan, but nobody would do that. Nobody would go start a nonprofit so that they could get uh, an insider view of what their customer goes through and then be able to start a nonprofit just to refine a model that they're going to sell one day. And people, you know, people that are supporting the nonprofit might not want to support that. <laughs> so God did it for me, right? He was like, yeah, that is the plan. Uh, but I could only see just in front of me. The things that you're thinking are major failures. Like what I want you to think of here is one, the thing that you're like, are always weighing on your mind. You can't pay the rent. You can't pay your salary. You can't pay your staff. Um, you're not fully funded. You're not sure if you'll get participants next year. Like whatever the things are, walk yourself down like down those roads of like, okay, if then that happens, then what? If that happens, then what? Now imagine God says to you, you are not going to be able to pay the rent next month and it'll be okay. If you don't get participants next year, it'll be okay. It's all part of this journey. If you can't do X, Y, or Z, that was actually part of my plan. If you believed all of the failures, all of the failures that you are afraid of happening were God's plan, would you be afraid of them? If God's like, I'm going to shut this down for you. I'm going to make sure that you fail here. I'm going to make sure this challenge happens and it's all going to refine you to make you this great person. Would you be like, I'm still afraid of those failures. No, you'd be like next failure, next failure, like God's plan, right? So don't be afraid of those failures and imagine that they are strategically put there to get you to be the person that you were intended to be, okay? So facing your fears really just looks like having this process of, okay, what's your ultimate fear? I lose my job. Uh, I can't pay for something, whatever the fear is, go down and imagine that happening and then say, what would you do? What would you do? You can come up with a plan. If a plan helps you feel better for all the different outcomes that might happen, then do that. Come up with the plan, but know that you have a plan for if that happens and then stop feeding the fear. Walking in faith is just saying, I'm aware, I'm aware that all these things could happen, but I'm not going to live in a could happen world and I'm continuing to walk forward in faith. And I would also say that you should honor what you know isn't right. Don't confuse walking forward in faith with doing things that are completely aligned with your soul. If you are walking forward in faith, you're walking forward in what God's called you to do, it will not be unaligned with your soul. It will not suck you dry. It will not make you feel like you hate your life. Being aligned with God's grace and God's light does not feel 
soul sucking. It feels soul energizing. It feels joyous. It pours out. Okay. So am I saying that there shouldn't, that there isn't going to be hard work? No. Am I saying that you're not going to have challenges? No. Or am I saying that you're not going to have devastation? No. But if you're in a place where your stomach, your heart, you're going like, I hate this. I know I'm supposed to love it because I said it was my calling and I know I stepped out in faith and I, I even thought this was my life's purpose and I don't like my life right now. Honor that. Acknowledge that. That's okay. That's telling you something. Maybe you were supposed to start it, but you weren't supposed to continue it. Maybe you're supposed to start it this way and you weren't supposed to continue it this exact way. What does work for you? Ask that question. What works for me? What would work for me? It might just be a little tweak. Maybe you're handling things in your organization that you don't want to handle and you could delegate it. And then your life is like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. I tell this story often, but I used to think that I, as a social worker, I was meant to meet with kids and I was meant to give trauma-informed therapeutic interventions on a one-on-one -on -one level. And then I realized I didn't like that. I, I wasn't fed by being one-on-one -on -one with people and giving direct service. And so I had an issue with like, oh my gosh, does this mean that I don't even care to help people? What does this mean? You know? And, uh, no, it was like, you're not supposed to do direct service. You are supposed to help people who are doing direct service. You're more strategic. You're more administrative. So that's, that's fine. In the times that you're feeling soul sucked, you're feeling like this isn't what, the part of my day that I like to do. Then see, is there, what does work for you? Is there a way your day would look where you would go? Those are all the things that's me in my sweet spot. That is exactly what I would like to do. See if you can make those tweaks because that feeling of soul sucking, that feeling of overwhelm or dread, those, that's walking in faith. That, those are inklings. Those are feelings. Those are callings of saying, uh, you know, yes, you were supposed to walk out in faith. You were supposed to start this nonprofit or you're supposed to go work for this nonprofit or whatever. But uh, those things are not aligned. We're getting off base. We're doing scope creep, right? A lot of nonprofits do mission creep where they get started in one thing and then other people ha have ideas for their nonprofit. And so they mission creep. So anytime you're feeling like this isn't aligned, this doesn't feel good, this is soul sucking. It doesn't mean it's not all or nothing. It doesn't mean, well, I guess my purpose wasn't supposed to do this or I wasn't supposed to do this nonprofit. Maybe it's just different. Maybe it's a small tweak. Maybe it's a change. Maybe it's delegation, you know? So just be open to that. You do have to honor yourself. Walking in faith does not mean just doing it because God told you to. And no, you don't need to be a martyr. You need to continue to be introspective, wake up every day, show up, face the challenges as growth opportunities. Okay. And then change it up, actually grow. Okay. So that brings me into my last point, which is the challenges. Okay. Because I, as much as I walked in faith, and I remember there were times that I would pray for the whole thing to get shut down. I'd be like, okay, you know, if this isn't going to work, just shut it down now. Save me, you know, another year of living without a salary and uh, struggling so much. But just know that all of the challenges are refinement. So every challenge that I had to face that was so overwhelming and I was like, I don't even want to be here. I'm not good at this. I don't want to learn how to... Uh, run a board. I don't want to learn how to, uh, you know, come up with foundational documents. Like I got into this to serve people. I didn't get into this for strategic planning and evaluation and all of this crap that nonprofit people that are executive directors really should know. I didn't get into this for foundational documents and understanding how to run a nonprofit. Like I got into this to serve others, right? But just know that all of those things are refinement. So if there is something that is facing you that's a big challenge, understand, get excited, get interested, get curious, and then step into the challenge because after that challenge is done, you'll now know how to do this, okay? So you're like, I don't really know how to write sponsorship emails. I don't really know how to ask a donor for money. I don't really know how to run an event. There's a lot of people that just sink down into the chair and they go, asking for money isn't my thing. Events aren't my thing. This isn't my thing. Well, guess what? It's an opportunity. Step into it. Run an event. Plan an event. 
figure that out. Talk to sponsors, talk to donors. The only way you get good at it, like the people that are good at it have just done it a bunch. So every challenge is an opportunity for you to step in and learn. And then after that, you're like, actually, I've secured a couple sponsorships. It doesn't overwhelm me anymore. I was so overwhelmed by so many things. And now pretty much anything I'm like, oh, I'll figure it out because I basically just taught myself that if I'm good at anything, I'm good at figuring it out. And that's actually an amazing skill and one that you should have. Understand that it's not like this huge challenge you need to overcome just to overcome it this one time. As you overcome each one of these challenges, it like adds things to your resume, it adds things to your little toolbox. And God needs to build us and refine us and mentor us into who we can become, right? He doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. So how does he do that? He takes a rough girl from Vermont and says, you know, go volunteer and I'm sure you can do it. And yes, you're going to be overwhelmed and you're going to cry and you're going to want to hide under your desk and you don't have any of the tools to do what I'm asking you to do. That is right. But you have the tenacity and you can figure it out. And I will throw you the resources the people, the supports for you to figure it out. But I'm not going to make it super easy because then you couldn't relate to anybody. You wouldn't empathize with anybody and you wouldn't have learned the true skill of how do I do this as a nobody coming up from the bottom. Walking in faith is being exploratory, being curious, being interested rather than being overwhelmed, being scared, giving up. Okay. So when you're feeling like there's this grant application I have to do and you're just so overwhelmed by it or there's something that you have to do <clears throat> there's an issue with the landlord you have to move uh facilities you have to something that just feels so insurmountable and you don't know how you're going to do it if you can get back into the mindset of like hmm this is interesting after this I'm going to get to put on my put in my experience bag that I have changed facilities as a nonprofit I have changed states I have secured this federal grant I've applied for federal grant funding. All of these things are things that you get to now say that you do. So they're opportunities to gain experience. Or you can just stay where you are and struggle and wonder why he's not giving you everything to support you. But you need to learn all of these skills. And so if you have the challenge, then you have an opportunity. And it's really about, you know, just change your perspective. How can you get interested and curious and okay, I don't know how to do this, but I'm going to step my first foot forward. And what resources can I call on? Internet, people, board members, volunteers to help me kind of navigate this process. And I know a lot of executive directors want to be like, I just need to find somebody to write the grant. I just need to find somebody to do it. I don't feel like dealing with it. That's not my sweet spot. I don't really get it. Well, guess what? Do you think that when I started strategic planning was my sweet spot? Do you think that when I started program evaluation was my sweet spot? No, working with kids and horses was my sweet spot. And then God refined me. Working with kids and horses wasn't my sweet spot anymore. And then I got into administration. And then, you know, I got my master's in program evaluation. And then I got more interested in research. And now my sweet spot is doing strategic planning and developing really clear, focused impact roadmaps for nonprofits and helping people get from a point of overwhelm and craziness to like, no, we can simplify this and we can make sure that we are doing what we say we were going to do and we can know exactly what that is. So all of it is refinement. So I would urge you to not just find a grant writer. Don't just find somebody to do this work. I need a volunteer to handle that and I'll figure, figure it all out now. I have three businesses and I do my accounting for all of them right now. And someday I'm going to have somebody that does my accounting. But it was really, really, really important that I set up all the accounting. I figured out how much I was keeping out for taxes. I figured out how to categorize every expense. I know how to jump in and do. Nobody's going to care about your numbers like you do. Nobody's going to care about your bylaws like you do. Nobody's going to care about your standard operating procedures like you do. And nobody is going to be able to sell somebody on funding your program like a grant writer than you do. When you hire a grant writer, all they do is pick your brain about how cool your program is and then they write it up. You have all the information. There's nothing about a grant writer besides maybe how to structure it and maybe how to be succinct that they know more than you. Like you are the perfect person to write your grants. You are the perfect person to write your foundational documents, your standard operating procedure. Like you know 
how you want your business run. You know how to sell your business. You know why your business is impactful. So you need to step into doing all of these things, okay? And that's really where the executive director is and more in that strategic place. But it's thinking of it as opportunity. So maybe just this year, you're like, I am going to figure out how to do this one thing. Next year, you're going to figure out how to do this other thing. But it is the faith part of it stays in the calm energy and the opportunity and the excitement about being refined, make me better, you know, build my experience, build my resume for my purpose, rather than I can't do anything more. And I don't really know and that like, I'm trying so hard that that grinding your gears, hard energy. If you sit back and you think about, okay, what's next for me? I don't want to stay here grinding my gears, serving a couple kids, not having any funding. So the next thing is like, show me, show me how to beef up my leadership. Show me how to get more strategic. Show me how to get this funding. Like I'm ready for it. And you do need to step into it. And it is hard work and it does feel expansive, meaning it's pulling you and expanding you. But then you start getting confident and then you look back And I don't even know like how to think about how much I've grown, but a lot of times I'll talk to executive directors who were just, who are right where I was and I'll start rattling things off like, oh, you should just do this. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, I don't know how to do like the very first tiny thing you said. And it reminds me like, Rebecca, you were there too. And now all of this stuff is like second nature to you. So You have to be willing and ready to grow. Being on a faith journey is being on like a constant trajectory for growth. And you're just going to grow, grow, grow. And do I say sometimes like, I think I'm done growing. I would like to just chill for a while. Yeah, I do. But when I look back at where I was and I look at where I am now, and then I think, and in the next five years, I can do that same growth or more. It gets me excited about being an engine, a hub, the hands and feet of what God wanted me to do. And I'm like, wow, the person that he called to do this thing is such a different person now. And he built that. He refined me. He qualified me. He showed me the way. And it was through a lot of challenges and suffering and shutting things down and me thinking God wasn't even there. But he was like, no, I was here the whole time. You just didn't see it. And you got attached to your little humanly outcomes and that's fine, but we're moving on bigger plans, bigger dreams. Okay. Okay. I hope that that helped you feel a little bit more faithful. A lot of it is just us stepping in. A lot of it is following those fears. So if you're afraid of something, think about, okay, what if that happened tomorrow? And ask yourself if God wanted that to happen, wanted you to not be able to pay your rent, would you be okay with it? Would you be like, okay, I guess if that's what you want, you know, and could you surrender that? Okay. Understand the idea comes from God, but the outcomes come from us. We get attached to the outcomes. So you want to make sure you're not attaching yourself to outcomes. You want to step forward in faith and still every day surrender. Like I'm just showing up. I'm showing up. I'm doing the work. I'm learning. I'm refining. But whether it's 25 kids or it's 10 kids or it's 10 acres or it's 25 acres or it's one can of soup, or it's, you know, 50,000 cans of soup. That's on you, God. I'm just here. I'm just showing up and understanding that all these challenges are refinement. They're opportunities for you to expand your little bag of resources, your experience, and then you add more value because you've already experienced all of these things. Okay. All right. I would love you to leave a comment. Let me know about your faith journey or let me just know if you like this video because comments really help with the YouTube algorithm. Like make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you like nonprofit advice or if you struggle with stepping out into your calling. If you're somebody that can resonate with that, I am your people. Thank you so much for your service to this world. Until next time. 